Thanks to the supporters of channel member David Carter. Oh, Mrs. Weymouth, if we had our time again with this football club. I don't know if I'd plunge the V-neck quite so low on this shirt. I feel like I'm exposing too much. I'm exposing too much chest hair. This feels like a perfect opportunity for some kind of hair removal advert. You like, you've not got one of them lined up. The timing, unacceptable. Hello and welcome to part 175 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games for you. One in the Premier League at home against Liverpool and the final Champions League group game away against Lyon where we'll be getting out the reserves for you. We do have some bad news though. The copy, the copy book for the season has been blotted. Um, we have a draw in the league against, I think, a Bournemouth bottom? Yeah, against bottom of the table Bournemouth. We drew 2-2 away from home. We are still unbeaten 15 games in. Um, we're 12 points clear of Manchester United down in third place, seven points clear of Manchester City with a game in hand, but we no longer have the 100% record. The invincible record will no doubt follow soon Soon after. Now, now we've, I can't believe we dropped points against Bournemouth. Utterly ridiculous. And um, we have already won the Champions League group though. Um, so the game against Leon is just a formality and it's a formality where you're going to get to see the reserves. I know you love the reserves. But first, we need to beat Liverpool. And this is the team we're going to put out there to try and do it. I mean, some of you would be fooled into thinking this is uh, this is pretty close to the reserves. I mean, it's not deliberately. We're just having a few uh, fitness issues. Jamie Much, Goran Jovanovic, uh, Diego Perez, all injured. Juan Jose and Kleber were both tied. Although Kleber looks like he's recovered since I picked the team. You know what? We'll leave him, on, we'll leave him out of the squad. It's fine. Um, and we are, we're just rotating more. It's just an indication that we are rotating more than we have done previously. So it's not that these are the reserves. I think this is still a very strong side, um, but it's just a little bit more rotated than what you may be used to seeing. Uh, so Perez in goal, about four of Kovalik, Elias, Hannah and Abagai, Christensen and McKenna in midfield, Figuera and Park out wide, and then Marcelo and Daly up front. Adrian Daly... Six goals in nine Premier League appearances. That's six goals in six starts in the Premier League. 12 goals from 11 starts this season in all competitions. He's already considered a three and a half star current ability player, which puts him level with Goran Jovanovic um, and only half a star behind Sandro Veloso. He has the best potential of any striker at the club. Um, I think we are closing in on Adrian Daly being my number one striker. And not just the guy we're playing a lot because we're rotating. Um, he is improving all the time. He's still not quite caught up with Veloso physically, but Veloso's four years older. I think those physicals will come. He is there on everything else. It is just the physical stuff now. And he is not far behind. If we do the attribute comparison, um, you can see that, I mean, he's got much better natural fitness. Um, and I mean, Veloso's got him for stamina, but everything else acceleration, pace and strength. Veloso's only got one point on him. Um, and obviously, daly has got his own little strengths. He's got uh, better finishing, better first touch. Um, he's better defensively as well, better marking and better tackling. Uh, but he's braver, he's more determined, he's got better vision. Um, Veloso does have the edge for composure and we know Veloso is probably the most composed striker we've ever had. The one thing I'd like Daly to really work on is the work rate. Um, Veloso absolutely destroys him for work rate. Um, and he's better at crossing as well, which is why we're happy to put Veloso out on the wing at the moment. But yeah, I think if we could get um, Daly able to run all game long the way Veloso does with his 18 stamina and 16 work rate and hope he gets an extra half yard of pace and strength over the next couple of years and we've got a better player who scores just as many goals who came through our youth academy. And that would be perfect. Right, let's get this team submitted. Hopefully we see another good performance from Daly today. Um, he's he's pretty much, I'm saying I'm rotating everybody else. I think Daly has started every single match since the last episode. Whether we're playing a full strength team or a rotated team or a young team in the Carabao Cup, Daly's just playing every match. I'm trying to get as much football into him as possible. I am keeping an eye on his fitness levels, but you've just seen he's got very high natural fitness. So... Unless he starts to tire, I don't really feel any reason that he needs to come out of the team. We just need to keep him in there and keep him doing that. I think he's offside there, uh, but he's uh, 
he's definitely sharp at the moment and getting better all the time. And I think the ridiculous amount of football he's playing at the moment is certainly helping with the speed with which he's currently doing a Mick Powell. How close was this offside? I mean, he's pretty, pretty well offside there. So we won't argue too much, I suppose, on this occasion. We'll accept that he probably was offside. Figuera with the corner and Elias is there. And that is 1-0 this time. And Elias with the dominant header from the corner, putting us ahead after 16 minutes. And the, the new home of football going absolutely wild. Look at him. Look at him. They're delighted. Lovely, lovely stuff. And that puts us uh, back well, well clear. 10 points clear of second at the top of the Premier League. As things stand, Elias is in again, but this time he can't keep his header down. Figuera hits a very nice corner. I think this is also your first opportunity to see uh, McKinna and Christensen together in central midfield, which um, long term, I think that probably is the central midfield partnership we're leaning towards. McKinna playing in his stronger box-to-box -box midfield role and Christensen hopefully coming in as the first really good natural oh, daily the really good natural offensive uh, uh, deep line playmaker we've had since Gregoire probably and um, we're hoping Christensen can fill that role that McKenna's been doing for a couple of years with Kleber at box to box um, and Hannah getting better all the time at centre back as well Abba guy back out at left back at uh, right back sorry I mean it's it's just I know I get very excited about this team every episode now but you you got you got to understand I've never had a squad like it I love this team so much. I never want this series to end. I don't think I'll ever have a team that I love as much as this team. This squad, that's the thing that's so great. We've got a squad of 20, 22 players who are all fantastic and all deserve to be regular starters. And they're just they used interchangeably. That's some pretty poor goalkeeping there from Perez. That's one area where I won't I won't miss not being able to sign a world-class goalkeeper when we move on to non-league to legend in FM22, <laughs> it's, it's going to be nice to be able to fix problems like that again because we've talked about it before. The series isn't going to have another four or five years left in it. There's not a lot of point in me going out and spending big money on an 18-year-old goalkeeper when we're very unlikely to, to start him as our regular goalkeeper aged 18. So any keepers I bring in now, they're helping slam dunk or Harrison Davies, whoever that whoever the next man who gets this job is, but there's no helping me with the goalkeeper situation at this point. Figuera, I'm trying to get past his man, but couldn't get there. And uh, it's 1-1 as we approach half time. We really should be ahead in this game. We have been the better team. McKinna does very well there. Playing it back to Christensen, who dropped back into that little gap between defence and midfield, which is exactly where we want him to be playing. And Figuera trying the shot from range. Figuera is always better playing on the right-hand side, I think. I don't know that long-term playing him on the left wing is going to be the solution. When we've got Ian and Kleber and Madness who can all play on that side. I know Figueroa sat there on an eight today and you're all going, Kev, what are you talking about? He's just, I don't know. You saw uh, that wasted, that wasted shot there. He's on a, he's on such a high rating because he hits a good corner. I think actual playing as a left winger, he's not been as good as Ian normally is or as Kleber could have been or as Madness could have been. Whereas if we play him on the right, he's brilliant. That's what we brought Kovalik back for. He really is the best we've got at those covering tackles. Uh, it, but does make me think, again, thinking long-term, is his future, and I know we've toyed with this before and it didn't really work, but is Kovalik's future as the covering centre-back? Because he's he's quick and he is so good at those covering tackles. He's kind of wasted at left-back. Marcelo's in here, though, and are we offside again there? I, think, I don't think we are. I think we've got the corner. Um, so Figuera with another chance to stick it on somebody's head. This time he finds McKinna. And he he can't keep his... Well, he, he did keep his header down. He just headed it straight into the hands of the goalkeeper. Not quite so much of a threat in that position as Kleber would be. And, of course, the corners are all set up to suit Kleber from that position. Right, we are going to take McKinnor off, I think. Um, Daly's had a really poor game. After all the excitement talking about Daly, he's had a very, very poor game. So Vinicius Antonio is going to come on and play central midfield. We've played him there a few times. We're going to get Sandro Veloso on to give him a chance to redeem himself um, and I think we're also going to bring on Madness for Park and move Figuera back onto the right hand side where he should be we're going to drop a little bit of encouragement and hope that those three changes are enough to allow us to grab a late winner it's Figuera with the set piece again looking for Elias again oh it's cleared off the line 
Elias very nearly grabbing his second of the game. That was a lovely set-piece delivery again from Figueroa. He really is very good at that. Um, but I think we are being held to our second draw of the season. And the, the ridiculous form we've started this year in is starting to slow down a little bit. We've still not lost a game, but we're starting to show signs that we might not be the, the invincible, irresistible force that we look like we might be this season. But we are still unbeaten. And now we're going to play another very rotated side against Leon in the Champions League, who've already qualified for the knockout rounds to see just how good this second string matches up against uh, against real top tier opposition. Well, we played such a weakened team against Liverpool that a lot of these in their in their pre advertised uh, backup players game are players you've just seen. Um, but we are bringing Primus and Alpish in to play at the back. Hannah's going out to play right back. Um, Kovalik and Abagai dropping out of the back four. Williams comes back in in goal um, just to continue ticking over with the odd appearance here and there. He's uh, he's played one Champions League and two Carabao Cup games so far this season. So Alex Williams still getting his game time here and there. And we're going to start Vinicius Antonio alongside Christians in the midfield. That's the way the last game finished. And likewise, the wingers finished this way in the last game. Madis on the left, Figuera on the right. And we're going with Marcelo and Daly up front again, as we did in the last match. Um, Abagai, Park and McKenna at a three. You get to sit out the squad completely and have a lovely little rest. Um, but all eyes on Alpish and Vinicius Antonio in midfield. And of course, the ongoing development of Adrian Daly up front. We want another big performance from him. This is a big European away game. I don't think Leon can go above us in the group, although I'm thinking about it now. Head-to-head -head is a thing, isn't it? In the Champions League. How much did we beat them by in the in the first... Did we, did we beat them in the first fixture? I think we did. I don't remember how much we beat them by. Um, so we might need to be a little bit aware of if we've gone a little bit too weak, letting them letting them finish above us because that obviously then starts to affect who we can get in the next round. Have you seen how strong Group B is, by the way? Barcelona and Dortmund are going to qualify into Milan, who've been winning Serie A. I mean, both Kovalik and Abagai have come back with Serie A winners' medals from their time at Inter. Inter not even going to get out of their group. Goodness me. Likewise, Lazio in Group C not going to make it through. There's some very strong groups. This is this is impressive stuff. Right, nothing at all has happened in that first half. Um, we probably need to be thinking in terms of giving Veloso another opportunity to force his way back into the team. Um, Figuera is probably not going to play much beyond this hour mark, I think. I think we probably will take him off now. He's not long since recovered from his spine injury that took him out in pre-season. Um, so we should probably give Veloso a little bit more game time. We want to... It's not even so much as... Veloso is going to force his way back into the team at this point, unless he sorts his head out. He's not. In, until he's no longer unhappy, he doesn't start for the club. But if we're going to be selling him, which I am considering doing, if we get a big enough offer, um, we need a big offer, uh, which means to get a big offer, he needs to be playing football. So we need to be getting him off that bench and involved as often as we can, get him scoring goals where we can. Primus then, across to Vinicius Antonio. And now Christensen, Veloso, out on the right, can he find the cross? Um, he's played it back to Hannah, who, I mean, Hannah's looking at Antonio in midfield thinking, you're a proper wing back. Why am I having to do it? Oh, and that's some poor play there from Christensen. Alpish not able to save him from it. And Leon have gone up the other end and grabbed the first goal of the match. This could be our first defeat of the season if we're not careful. And it's it might end up serving as a little bit of a wake-up call that I'm taking this rotation like a little bit too far. I don't remember the last time I played my first 11 all at the same time, which is probably a bad thing. We are still top of the group as things stand, but obviously a couple of draws in the league and now a defeat in the Champions League, if it ends that way, um, it's not the most positive form to be taking forward. Right, we're going to bring Kleber on in midfield and we're going to swap those two over. And we are also going to bring on, we're going to bring Ian on, I think, stick him out on the right and get Veloso playing up front alongside Marcelo. And I mean, Veloso's got 20 minutes here against Leon to prove that he should be our starting striker. Daly's had a poor episode. After all that talk, Daly has been poor. 
And I imagine there's the beginnings of a Veloso fan club. We almost gifted them a second goal. We gave them the first, and now Elias trying to give them the second. That's poor. Is that Hannah or Antonio? Some really poor defending again. I think that is Hannah, who is playing out of position at right back today. So I can forgive him a little for it. But I think Leon is showing us here that our our second string, and probably more importantly, a number of players being tried out of position. Antonio in midfield, Veloso on the wing, Hannah at right back, Marcelo up front. All of these uh, are players playing outside of what you'd consider their normal position. And um, I think message received, football manager. Thank you very much. Don't mess around this much in future. Maybe. Certainly not against this kind of quality of opposition. Kleber was in there looking for the uh, looking for the header, but can't find it. We are going to... We're going to go attacking. We're going to demand more. But I suspect we are going to pick up a defeat in this game. And I have to put my my big boy brave face on for the uh, for the press conference after the match. I just explain to the media, you saw the team we put out. It didn't matter, did it? We still won the group, didn't we? I hope, unless we concede even more goals. We're all right. This doesn't matter. Ah, madness then. Playing it into Veloso. Veloso trying to feed it through to Marcelo, but can't. Um, and now Primus back to Antonio again. And now Elias in midfield, uh, not in midfield, in, de in defence, playing out to Ian, playing on the right, which is rare for him, usually the left winger. Hannah getting forward on that right-hand side and Madness is in to grab us a goal back. A third goal of the season already for Madness. Not bad for what you could argue is our fourth choice left winger. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's obviously good enough to be playing, um, but we've got so much quality ahead of him. But that is a, a good driven cross from Hannah. And Madness is there to tuck it away. And have we got an equaliser in us? That would be lovely to keep the Invincible season going. I mean, I know, really, Invincible is measured in Premier League. And if we have an Invincible Premier League season, that would be great. I'd love an Invincible season overall. I've never done that before. I've done an Invincible Premier League season um, years ago with Tottenham in non-league to legend. I've never done unbeaten in all competitions over the course of a season. I know we've already lost the Community Shield, but that was on penalties. And World Club Cup, that's last year. That's last season. That doesn't count. I hope. It's like, oh, that doesn't count. Of course it doesn't count. Marcelo with the cross. Oh, if Ian can get his head on that there and grab us the equaliser, the unbeaten season, the invincible season was still an option. Um, I suspect that was the last opportunity to grab the equaliser. Come on, boys. Have we got one more goal in us? Let's show a little bit of character. Elias lunging in. I mean, I guess that, I guess it shows that he's trying hard. That's character. I said show character. Now do a goal. I followed the fur. Oh, my God. Well, things we've learned today. Alex Williams is past it. Christensen might not be the perfect solution. Alpish probably isn't ready. And Hannah's not a right back. As long as we're learning things from matches like this, then that's good. But, oh, dearie me, poor old Alex Williams. He's 34, 35 years old now. I imagine he's having the odd look now at the youth team coaching setup with his buddies, Harrison Davies and Nathan Curry and Kieran Hodgkinson, all a similar sort of age to him with their cushy jobs working in the academy and thinking, is it really worth me turning up for these Champions League games anymore just to concede goals like that? Or shall I go down and be the under-18s goalkeeping coach for a bit? and have a job for life. Because there's one there for you, Alex, if you want it. You're one of the ones who, of course, will be offered a job for life. All the Academy boys have a job for life. And you are definitely one of them. But that was poor. Unbeaten season is no longer an option. And probably more worryingly, only one win in our last four in all competitions. I probably need to play the first team against West Ham. I think that's probably for the best. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.